there's anybody near Northeast Tennessee that's in the market for some wood shavings for their wood stove or their fireplace, that's what we use these for. And, uh, send me an email because I can hook you up with probably about as much as you can handle. But well, here's what we're doing today. This is a brand new uh, piece of equipment here that I bought. It's been about two years ago and I've just never got around to using it yet. But anyways, I do a lot of uh, hand, uh, hand planing on, uh, on wood on this channel. But uh, you know, when you run a business, time is money and sometimes you need to do something a little bit faster. And this right here is gonna enable me to get these slabs ready to sell a whole lot faster. And what we're looking at here, and I, uh, a lot of you guys have probably seen this before, this is just a, uh, a router sled. It pretty much is what it says it is, just a sled for the router to ride on. And the way this works is, I have a, a surfacing bit, I'll show you a little bit later on the bottom of this thing, and it's a, it's a monster of a router bit. It was, it, was, it was almost $80, I think, huge router bit. But it mounts on the bottom of the router, and the router glides on these rails and you set your depth of cut or your plunge on your piece of work and you're able to make a flat surface with the router and clean up all the, all the drying marks and the, and the sawmill marks and have a finished piece and ready to go. And it, it works really well. The, the, uh, the rail system comes from a company called uh, uh, Woodhaven, made in the USA and uh, I bought it from them about two years ago, like I said, and I've just now got around to using it finally. But it, it, this is a nice setup here. It takes a little uh, time to get everything dialed in and get both rails co-planar with each other and get everything a level surface. And I, uh, later on, I've got plans. I'm gonna build a, a, a just a all-purpose table for this setup where I just have a table about 10 foot long for slabs to be milled on. Because I enjoy hand planes, don't get me wrong, using hand tools, but. I did my first one last night, which is this one that I'm finishing up on. I put some, I put some uh, pictures on social media of it last night and got a good response. And one guy asked me to make a video on it, so here it is. And instead of you know an hour or so using hand planes, you can get a, you know, almost a perfect flat, you know, board using this right here and a lot less effort and a lot less time. As you can see, the biggest drawback to this process is the mess. There's dust flying everywhere. I'd go out this morning and get a dust mask, and uh, it made some mess in the shop. Everything's got dust on it in here now, and it's loud. I mean, you feel like you're working in a factory. You got your ear protection. You got your, you know, you got your uh, respiratory protection going on, and this stuff flying through the air. It made some mess. So my plans are to build my table outside somewhere that's covered, not having in here just because it makes such a mess when you use this. Now this router, I also have a Festool router with great dust collection, but I would fill up a bag so fast. It just wouldn't be worth it just because you have to change it out so much. That's why I'm not using a dust collection here. I'm just letting it fly pretty much. You get here from Woodhaven, they say you the, they give you the base for the router to mount on and these aluminum extrusion rails here, extrusion, if I'm saying that right, and there's no uh, give in them. They don't move at all. They're completely solid as you go across here. So there's no deviation in the wood. You get both of these and this will do up to 50, I think a 50 inch wide slab. So it's, it's gonna be big enough for anything I ever do. And then these rails here made out of MDF. I got them as well with it. I got them clamped down to these saw horses and I got the, I got the work resting on two sheets of uh, birch plywood so it's nice and stout. It slides here on the rails real easily and uh, it's pretty easy to use just time consuming you gotta set everything up once it's set up and dialed in you can flatten the slab pretty fast now this one's about finished up here I had to do the bottom a little bit and I, I need to do that top just a little bit more there's a low spot in it and what I did last night was when it was finished I put it on the workbench and, and uh, used the number seven Lee Nelson jointer plane to go over it to, to really just to clean up some of the mill marks and it looked fantastic when it was done. What I'm gonna do today, this slab's just about finished. I'm gonna put another one on here and kind of show you how this thing is working 
and the easiness to it. And the worst part about it is the noise and the dust. Everything else is pretty simple. But uh, Woodhaven has these. You can buy it from them. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check them out. They make a lot of other jigs. This is the only one I've ever used by them. But you got to have a good size router to, to run this bit. This is a three and a quarter or three and a half horsepower Makita. I think it's about one of the biggest routers they make. And I got it at the same time I bought this router sled. I bought it just to use on this sled to be totally dedicated to it. This maple here actually has some curl in it. Something's always fun to do is put a little water on the board after you get it surfaced like this so you can really see the color and the grain and what all it's got to offer. It'd look even better if you put some oil or some finish on there. But uh, I milled these up last summer. I did a short video on that as well. In case you missed that one, this is some of the timber we milled up last uh, August, maybe. I'm not remember what it was. one here ready to go and had to shim it from the bottom that's what you don't want to have you don't want to have this slab rocking any at all because it's uh, it's nowhere near flat on either side and you want a good steady surface here but right here's what I was talking about that's why you need a two or three or bigger horsepower uh, router this has got a half inch shank on it and it's an inch and three quarter diameter that's just like the one I have on the router right now I got two of them but that is a huge router bit
Thank you.